Denso Youth for Earth Action 2010 is an international program fostering youths who possess a high level of awareness regarding the symbiosis of humankind and nature. This year, 22 college students from seven Asian countries participated in a two-week on-site program in October, which took place in Mount Fuji, Lake Biwa, and Aichi Prefecture on the theme of water. The first phase of the program was held at Mount Fuji, and the students learned about the blessing of water and the coexistence of humankind and nature. From the fifth station of Mount Fuji, the students walked up to the Hoei Crater. <laughs> so tired, but very funny. After nearly 30 minutes, the Hoei Crater is almost within reach. We closed our eyes and walked closer. When we opened our eyes... Welcome to the crater! We are here! We are here! Right in front of us, there was a crater formed 300 years ago. It is overwhelming to see the power of nature up close. After descending Mount Fuji, we headed to Sengen Taisha Shrine. Wakutama Ike, a pond on the shrine premises, receives underflow water from Mount Fuji. We participated in research and cultural activities using the pond water and experienced the grace of Mother Nature. People living in the communities at the foot of Mount Fuji are trying to conserve and promote this blessed environment. The locals work together to maintain bamboo forests and clean water courses. On this day, the participants lodged with the people in the community. Here, the students had an opportunity to experience Japanese culture. Through this phase, we learned the marvels of nature and the kindness of local people. After a day near Mount Fuji, the training site was relocated to Lake Biwa. Lake Nishinoko, connected to Lake Biwa, is covered by reeds counting up to 60% of those in Lake Biwa. The students tried making Yoshizu, a screen made with woven reeds. Joints have to be removed from each reed before we tie the stems together. Reeds help clean the water in Lake Biwa. Although use of Biwa's reeds has decreased, its benefits are being rediscovered. In addition to using reeds in traditional ways, such as Yoshizu making, the locals and the authorities are trying to create new uses for the reeds. The following day, the participants conducted a survey of the water quality and mud. Then we visited the Harie area to learn about Kabata culture. Traditional Kabata culture is known for its effective use of natural water in daily life. So in summer, we use so often. In Hayasaki Naiko, located next to Lake Biwa, the students met with the local people and members of the administration who are working to restore the natural environment in the area. <laughs> the latter part of the program took place at Denso's headquarters in the Anjo plant, where the participants learned about the company's efforts in making social contributions and reducing environmental burdens. As members of the local community, Denso employees clean the streets during their lunch break. On the day of the program, the participants clean the streets alongside the local people, just as Denso's new employees do every spring. The students learned about the company's efforts to save on resources by minimizing the waste in material usage as well as water usage during manufacturing. The students asked many questions. It is the last day of the program. Each student developed and presented an outline of an action plan based on what they'd learned from the program. 
Um, basically, what I learned from DYEA, it is, is, it's not enough to educate the people. It is a must that you touch their hearts. Because when you touch their hearts, they have this passion. And this passion will push them to do something for the environment. This passion will burn their desire to really work for the environment. This concluded the two-week program. The participants went back to their home countries and finalized their action plans. Four participants were selected to present their action plans at the forum. Having experienced Japanese culture and learned about the human environment symbiosis from various viewpoints, the participants of the Youth for Earth Action program gathered again at New Earthlings Forum to propose resolutions for environmental issues. The forum opened with a keynote lecture offering practical ideas on how diversified working styles can make society better. Then, four student representatives presented their action plans for resolving environmental issues. This student proposed an action plan in the Philippines. In order to fight poverty and raise children's awareness on environmental issues, children can collect used newspapers, bring them to elementary schools, and sell them to paper recycling manufacturers. The profit will be used to buy stationery. The next presentation talked about an ecological awareness camp targeted for elementary school students to protect the decreasing number of sea turtles. This presentation offered a way to promote the concept and practice of green purchasing by selling shoes made from recycled materials by an Indonesian student entrepreneur. The last presentation was about cooperation between Japanese students and a college job placement support center in offering seminars to educate people on the correlation between businesses' social contribution and the economy. The students presented unique action plans that they developed based on what they learned in the program. It seems that the message from the youth resonated in the hearts of the audience. After the forum, I am really inspired to see that people are actually interested in the project that I proposed. And there are like a few youth from uh, the university students that can actually, you know, come up with questions and ask. And I see that they are very interested in this project. And so that's why, like I say, the youth itself is a very good source of medium to actually be a mediator to stop environmental problems as well to conserve the biodiversity. Based on ideas gained in this program, the students are sure to pursue activities for the future of the Earth in their own countries.